In a previous tutorial, we talked about lists, but today we're going to go a little bit deeper and talk about the list index view model property, what it is, and some interesting things that you can do with it. As a quick recap of how to make a list, here I have a component. It's very simple, it's just a hover and unhover interaction with a little bit of audio. Now let's say I want to use four different versions of this component in a list. The first thing we need to do is go to its view model, then over to its instances panel, into the settings, and create three more instances. Awesome, we can now use these instances in a list. Next, we need to create a new artboard, shortcut A, and then give this new artboard its own view model. I'm going to call this view model list view model. And now we need to give this view model a list property. With the list property highlighted, just go over here and you can add new list items. I'm just going to create four. And in each of them, I'm going to select a specific instance of the item view model. So for the first list item, I'm going to select the first instance. For the second list item, the second instance, and so on. Now that we have our list property set up, we need to apply it to our design. However, our design, as you can see, is currently empty. So we need to go over here to the layout section, click plus, and create a new artboard list. I'm going to set it to be centered and a column. And if we go into the hierarchy, we can select the artboard list itself. And over here, we can select the specific list property that we want to use. And now when I press play, I have four different instances of the same component. You may notice that you can't see the components unless the state machine is active. This is currently normal behavior in Rive. However, if you want to see the list when your state machine is inactive, just go up here and turn this toggle on to preview bound values. You can now see the items in your list. However, to interact with them, we of course need to activate the state machine. So now we have a list, but this tutorial is about the list index view model property. So what does it do? Well, a list index tells Rive the position within your list that your specific instances hold. So for instance, the first item in my list is at list index position zero. The second item is at position one, position two, and position three. However, without a list index property, we can't actually use that information. So what I need to do is go to my data panel, go into my original components view model, click plus and go down here to list attributes and give it an index property. Up here, you can see that it says list index values cannot be edited. This is because list index values are set in the list property when you applied your specific instances to your various list items. And if I press play, you'll see that nothing's really changed. This is because we have our list index property, but we're currently not using it. The simplest way I could use it is to highlight my original component, go into its hierarchy, and create a new text run. I'm just going to put a space at the end of the first text run. And then I'm going to highlight the second text run, right click, data bind, and I'm going to take in the list index to control this text run. However, the list index is a number, so I first need to create a converter. So I'll go to my data panel, click plus, converter, string, convert to string. Now if I go back into my hierarchy, update bind, and I'll use that convert to string converter to convert our list index into a string and then control that specific text run. You can see over here that the text run now says zero. And if I highlight this artboard, 
you'll see that each instance's text run is being controlled by its own unique list index. However, you can do much more using list indexes. For instance, you can use them as conditions in the state machine. So as a super simple example, I'm going to highlight my original component, and then I'm going to create a new timeline. I'll just call it red. And then I'm going to set some keyframes for the color and make them all red. Then I'm going to open my state machine, drag red onto the state machine stage and connect it to my first state. Click plus and we can now use the list index as a condition in the state machine. I'll say if the list index of this specific instance is equal to zero, then we simply go from our first state straight over to red. And since this is the state machine for our original component, that means that when we highlight this artboard and press play, the only instance where that condition was met was the instance whose list index was zero. Now let's create a slightly more complex example. I'm just going to delete the red timeline and move this up a little bit. And then I'm going to drag on my click timeline. And the difference between idle and click is idle is clear and click is green. So back to the state machine. So the effect that I want to achieve is that when we play this state machine, I can hover on the items. But if I was to click an item, that click activates that specific instance's click timeline and turns it green. However, I only want one item at a time to be green. So if item zero was clicked green, and I then clicked on item one, I would want item zero to turn back to clear. And we can do this using the list index property. Let me show you how. The first thing we need to do is go into our data panel. And then in our list view model, we need to create a number property. And we're gonna use this number property to essentially save the list index of the instance that we have most recently clicked. I'm just gonna call it index num. And as you can see, its default value is zero. I'm now gonna go into my original component, open up the state machine and create a listener. I'm gonna set the target of the listener to be the component itself. And in the listener settings, I'm gonna say if the pointer clicks down on the component, then we're going to set index number to be the same as the list index of the instance that we just clicked. So if I click on this item, then index number is gonna be set to zero. If I click on this item, index number will be set to one and two and three. So I can now go into the state machine of our original component and use that to transition towards the click timeline and transition out of the click timeline. So the first transitions condition will be if my index number is equal to the list index, then we must have clicked on this specific instance. Then we transition from hover to click. And now to move away from the click timeline, I'm gonna set the condition to be if the index number is not equal to the list index, then we go from click back to idle. Because if the index number and the list index of this specific instance are not the same, this means that we must have clicked on a different instance, and therefore this instance should go back to the idle state. Essentially, all this state machine says is if we are currently hovering and I click on a specific instance, then we transition to its click timeline. However, if we click on a different instance, then any instance that's currently in the click timeline transitions back to idle. So in essence, we can hover and we can click and only one is active. However, you will notice that if I press play, 
and hover over item 0, it acts as if it is clicked. This is because the first item's list index is 0, and the index number's default value is also 0. That means that if we are hovering over this item, this condition is met. So how do we stop this from happening? Well, simply change the index number's default value to minus 1. That just means that if we were to hover over our first item, the index number does not equal the first item's list index. So now when I press play, I can hover over any item I want, click any item I want, and only one is green at any given time.